as this gathering for worship can encompass many locations across the globe, we take a moment to pause, remember, and reflect upon our obligation as good treaty peoples to uphold the work of truth and reconciliation and respect the history, spirituality, and culture of First Nations Inui and Métis, and particularly the Anishinaabe, neutral, and Haudenosaunee peoples here in this place on the Tuck Creek watershed where this worship originates and the peoples of the land from wherever you join into this gathering. Thank you for your continued support of Holy Cross's ministries. It is a real blessing to be able to continue to bring this worship to you. We gratefully return to God what has been entrusted to us. Heavenly One, receive our gifts with joy for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. The grace of our loving God who stands with us in the midst of suffering, who brings light and life, be with you all and also with you. We confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful Creator, we bring our flawed and weary selves before you. We cry at the pain we see in the world, that which has been brought upon us which we bring upon others and which we bring upon ourselves. We know that healing is possible, but we often choose suffering instead. Visit us with your mercy and reconciliation that we might know joy once more. Amen. Weeping may last the night, but joy comes with the morning. Receive the word of our God's forgiveness and know that it is real here and now. You have been restored. Your life is a testimony to God's healing power. In Christ's name, amen.
God of righteousness, you have made your law a word of good news for us today. We desire to walk in your ways and follow in your footsteps. Recognize your righteousness within us and make us your own. Amen. A reading from Psalms. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked, or take the path that sinners tread, or sit in the seat of scoffers. But their delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law they meditate day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, which yield their fruit in its season, and their leaves do not wither. In all that they do, they prosper. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. There's all sorts of conventional wisdom about the pursuit of happiness, how to find happiness in relationships, how to find it at work, how to find it in life in general. And for many people, this seems to be one of those greatest pursuits in life. Why? Shouldn't happiness be our default situation? I don't think that God created humanity with the desire that we be sad or grumpy or unfulfilled as our base emotional state. If we truly believe, if we truly believe that we are created in God's image, then I'd hope that we believe that we were created at our base to be happy, or at least pretty content with life. Our reading today compares humanity, or at least those who are happy, to trees that are planted by streams of water. As I walked down to Tuck Creek a couple of weeks ago to get some video footage for our worship, I couldn't help but notice that not all of the trees around the creek were in the same shape. Some were definitely healthier than others. Others had grown bigger and others smaller. And some of the ones further away from the creek seemed healthier than some of the ones that were closer to it. However, the imagery of a tree being planted close to the water is one that stuck with me. We know it to be true to some degree that in order for a tree to survive, to thrive, for it to be able to produce leaves and produce fruit. It needs to be well supplied with water. 
as our pandemic progressed, being well supplied with things has taken on a variety of meanings. At first, it meant that you had toilet paper. Well, that was the first thing that we couldn't get enough of, right? We've also wanted more masks, more vaccines, more gasoline, more lumber, more food, more work, more recreation, more schooling. There seems to be no end in that list of things that seems to be scarce these days. Just as we solve one shortage, there seems to be another waiting for us. In many ways, we've become weary. Weary as we've journeyed through this pandemic time, we've become unhappy. Unhappy with our politicians, with our neighbors, with companies that are to supply us with whatever it is that we want. Our unhappiness, though, isn't due to a lack of self-help resources, for we know that we can order those by the truckload and have them fairly quickly delivered to our house. Our psalm today leads us into an ancient self-help book. Our reading starts out, happy are those. Another way of putting it could be, blessed is, as it is translated in the King James Version. Like the Beatitudes of Matthew 5, having the psalm start the book of Psalms alerts us to the purpose of this book. It is to invite us to read and use the entire book of Psalms as a guide to a blessed life. The first two verses guide us as to what not to do and what to do in our search for that blessed life, or as I would put it, in our search for happiness. We are not to follow the advice of the wicked, follow the paths of sinners. We are to delight in the law of our God and to meditate on that law night and day. If we take a moment though, and look at what the law of our God accomplishes, we first, in my mind, should look at what our current laws accomplish as well. See, in some cases, our current laws constrain us. They tell us what we cannot do. And they invoke punishments if we break those laws. Don't drive over the posted speed limit, or you will be fined. Well, at least if you're stopped. In some cases, though, our laws set us free. Free to take some risks, because we know that we will be protected. Take out a loan from a bank. You know that the law says the bank can't just change the rate at any time and ask for more money. You're protected. You can take the risk of borrowing that money, hopefully with the assurance that you can pay it back. Laws can both be constraining and freeing in our lives. But how does the law work? How does God's law work? St. John of Damascus wrote in the late 600s or early 700s that God's law is like our conscience. That part of us that innately knows 
what is good and what is evil, what is right and what is wrong. John of Damascus proposes that if we follow our conscience, that is, if we hold to God's law, we may walk in light. Of course, for us as Christians, this light is the light of the world, Jesus the Christ. Walking in light, walking in the way of Jesus, is the key to our finding happiness in life. Jesus said, You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. This from John 14 verses 4 to 6. As we begin this series of reading through the Psalms, I encourage you to take some time and read through this biblical book. While they don't talk about Jesus, they do help us see the law of God. They do help us see light in the world. Meditate on these psalms night and day. Find in them the happiness that God created within you at the time that you were knit together in your mother's womb. For then, for then we will find the way forward. We will find the truth of our existence. We will find the light of the world. And ultimately, we will find the life that we were meant to live. For that, we give thanks. Amen. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For the times of inconsolable sorrow and for the times of unbridled joy, we pray for the Church, the world, and all those in need. God of the law, help us to delight in your law, meditating upon it day and night. For your law there is love, and in your love there is eternal life. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all the trees that are nourished by streams of flowing waters, for the desert cactuses and the mountaintop evergreens, we celebrate your good creation, knowing that all good things have been made by you. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be a strong, informing presence in the lives of those who graduate from their schools in the coming weeks. Remind them daily that you are in the world with them, and they are never alone. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour your healing waters upon all who suffer internally or externally, especially Adele, Aidan, Alex, 
all healthcare workers, all in Halton and around the world living with COVID-19. Astor, Cal, Carol, Carolyn, Celeste, Clayton, Colleen, Daniel M., Frida, Gail, Hedda, Ingo and Sandra, Irene and Brooke, Janice, Jerlene, Jesse, Larry, Linda, Liz and Jordan, Laureen, Marg, Melanie, Mickey and Ned, Natalie, Neil, Ray, Regini, Richard, Rena, Rose and Herman, the self-employed who are facing the stress of severely reduced income as the virus impacts their businesses, Shelley, the unemployed and underemployed, Valerie, and all whom we hold in our hearts. Bring sweet wholeness to all in need. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be gentle with us when we fail, O God, and bring all broken and imperfect people into your loving embrace. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Michael, our bishop, Susan, our national bishop, the Reverend Conrad Plummer, President of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Guyana, the Right Reverend Sani Ibrahim Azar, Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Jordan and the Holy Land, and the Right Reverend Susan Bell, Bishop of the Diocese of Niagara. May their ministries draw people to love you, God. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Kelly Arnett and Hugh and Rhonda Eisler and their ministries through her Holy Cross. We pray for all the members of St. Elizabeth's Anglican Church here in Burlington. May their lives inspire us to continue moving forward and meeting the needs of the community. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With a mixture of sorrow and joy, we remember all who have come into your kingdom before us. Make your promise of eternal life known to all. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With great joy, we praise your holy name, confident that all our prayers have been heard for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. As the waters nourish the trees that bring forth fruit, the gifts of Jesus' body and blood in bread and wine nourishes our souls. We long to receive again your holy sustenance. We ask to bear fruit that nourishes the nations. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. our siblings, sisters, and brothers in the Anglican Diocese of Niagara are hosting an online worship experience celebrating Pride and the 2S LGBTQIA plus community on Sunday, June the 13th at 4 p.m. The theme of the worship is Fiercely Loved, You Belong, and it'll be hosted on the Diocese of Niagara's Facebook page and available through their YouTube channel. I hope you'll join in the worship if you can, and please pass along the details 
to those who you think might be interested and might not hear this message. The Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope, strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you peace. Amen. Go in peace, you are the body of Christ. Thanks be to God. The peace of the risen Christ be with you always.